Republican Senator Kevin Kramer joins us now of North Dakota. Uh, Senator, thank you. Impeachment now a matter for the Senate. Will you vote to convict and why? Well, first of all, Shepard, thanks for the opportunity. And, and I'm, you know, I've read my Constitution many times. And in this country, you are afforded due process, I guess, unless you're Donald Trump. And so I don't default to guilty. That would go against everything that the Constitution stands for. And certainly due process. Um, I guess like Senator McConnell, I'd hear the legal arguments. The unfortunate thing is, if there are some legal arguments, we haven't heard them yet. The House rushed to judgment, uh, rushed to impeachment without a single hearing, without talking to a single witness or hearing any testimony. So to me, it's hard to take you know, what the House is doing uh, seriously. It was hard to take it seriously a year ago when there was almost no due process, but there's much less today. So I don't default to guilty. I don't care who the person is or what the crime is that they've been accused of. So you think there's some ambiguity after the president held the, the rally, told his supporters to go down to the Capitol, they broke into the Capitol, frightened those inside, threatened to hang Vice President Pence. You think after all that there's some degree of ambiguity and you're undecided at this point? Well, there's no ambiguity about the people who perpetrated the crime, They're, in my mind. Now, even they are entitled to due process, Shepard, regardless of what they've done or what they've been accused of. But there's no ambiguity that uh, that the rioters and the mobsters you know, walked into the Capitol and destroyed lots of things and had these, these evil intentions. What is less clear, however, is that the president's rhetoric, while reckless, while at some level could be, you know, he could be accused of of inciting um, anger and inciting uh, some, be, you know, bad behavior, it's also clear that the the uh, exact words that he used do not rise to, in my mind anyway, a criminal level of uh, of incitement as we would have to consider, in my view, in in uh, this process, even as political as it is. Well. We, we, we both know criminal is not the bar here. At any rate, the majority leader, Mitch McConnell, told colleagues he's undecided. He, he seems to have all the power, as he so often does. As <clears throat> Mitch McConnell goes, so goes the Senate, do you believe? If he votes yes to impeach, to convict, will the Republican senators follow him? Well, Mitch McConnell has a lot of influence. Um, I don't know that he has a lot of power. He has a lot of power over the schedule, obviously, in the process. Um, but I don't know many wimps in the United States Senate who are going to vote one way or another just because Mitch McConnell does. Um, this would be a vote of conscience for sure. Hopefully it would be a vote based on facts and evidence that, that might be presented. Although, again, um, there's not been a true trial with, uh, with facts and evidence presented. The House is a much more political body than is the Senate. Their responsibility is more political than, than the Senate's. So it seems unlikely to me that 67 people would vote to impeach. It's even, in my view, of the in clear reading of the Constitution, it even seems a little bit iffy as to whether we even have the jurisdiction after the president's no longer the president, because the Constitution, the plain language of the Constitution, talks about impeachment of presidents and vice presidents, not former presidents and vice presidents. So I'm not even sure that there's not a constitutional question that has to be answered first. The Times and others report that Mitch McConnell is pleased that this process has come at least to this point and that he'd like mm -hmm. to purge Donald Trump of the party. Do you agree, or how do you feel about the president and his recent actions? Well, the president and his recent actions are two different things sometimes. I mean, I for four years, uh, I've stood by Donald Trump, be not because I love him so much personally, although I do, but more because he's been very good for our country, very good for my state of North Dakota. Uh, we have enjoyed peace and prosperity like never before, up until this last year when COVID-19 came to, to the United States. Um, so I'm a strong supporter of the president's and think that his place in history is going to be overshadowed largely by the recent events. And I think that's very unfortunate. I, as you probably know, did not um, vote to object to any of the electors. I think, again, a clear reading of the Constitution says I don't have that authority. And so uh, I did part with him on a few things. But by and large, um, I'm grateful for his service, but I have to admit that uh, I've spent the last two days now interviewing five Biden uh, nominees to the cabinet, and I want to get to the serious business of, of legislating and, and forming a new administration that we can work with, not continue to work against, which is what I'm afraid is going to happen if we continue with these, these uh, theatrical impeachments that Nancy Pelosi seems to be bent on. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.